In 1992, Steve McCann and Van Jacobson from Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory designed a tool for network packet filtering with Unix operating systems. It was called BPF. In 2014, eBPF, an extended version of BPF, was included in Linux 3.18. In 2020, Gobin Joher, a product manager at Google, introduced GKE Dataplane V2, an opinionated data plane that harnesses the power of eBPF. They wrote, As more and more enterprises adopt Kubernetes, the gamut of use cases is widening with new requirements around multi-cloud, security, visibility, and scalability. In addition, new technologies such as service mesh and serverless demand more customization from the underlying Kubernetes layer. These new requirements all have something in common. They need a more programmable data plane that can perform Kubernetes-aware packet manipulations without sacrificing performance. In 2021, Netflix developers announced a tool called Flow Exporter, which captures TCP flows in real time, providing data and insights at a large scale. This tool has enabled the creation of an exceptionally high-performing observability system. Surprisingly, despite the capabilities it offers, it uses less than 1% of the CPU. Flow Exporter mainly uses eBPF trace points to capture TCP flows. So, what is eBPF? How is it used? And do you really need an eBPF-based observability system like Netflix? Before beginning, we invite you to join our weekly cloud native newsletter by using the link in the description. We publish an episode every day, so don't forget to subscribe. The extended Berkeley packet filter is a Linux kernel technology that allows for efficient and safe execution of user-specified programs within the kernel. These programs can be used for a variety of use cases, including security, networking, and observability. Fully available since Linux 4.4, eBPF can help developers and administrators with many tasks such as packet filtering, network monitoring, system troubleshooting, tracing, and profiling. Let's take a practical use case to better understand the benefits. Scaling in Kubernetes is one of the most challenging problems. The logs and metrics provided by the orchestration engine are not always sufficient to gain insight into performance issues from within. Using eBPF, it is possible to capture and analyze the resource consumption of each process running in the cluster. This tool stands out from other tools because it offers highly granular data for each process. It offers unparalleled insight into the runtime behavior of applications and the system itself. It enables visibility of all system calls and provides packet and socket level networking data. Compared to logs and other metrics, there is no doubt that eBPF provides more detailed information. This is essentially what helps teams better understand their applications and systems to fine-tune their scalability techniques. By fine-tuning resources, companies often reduce their operational costs. eBPF has many use cases related to observability. However, it not only provides visibility, but also control mechanisms. For example, it can be used to filter system calls, network traffic, and processes. Using eBPF, you can turn any system call into an event. The most interesting part is that you don't usually need to write the programs yourself. In fact, you can use the extended Berkeley packet filter indirectly through tools like BPF Trace or Cilium. These open source projects provide a high-level abstraction on top of it. In one of the most noticeable talks on observability, Netflix's Brendan Gregg described the Berkeley packet filter as superpowers for Linux. Indeed, it's a revolutionary technology not just because of its features, but also because of its ability to let programmers execute custom bytecode within the kernel without needing to modify the kernel or load additional modules. You should certainly keep an eye on eBPF since it is a revolutionary technology used by the big players in the cloud native space. But should you use it in your production systems? Basically, you should start by asking yourself questions related to the use case of the technology itself. Do I need to collect data from the kernel and user space programs? Do I have advanced filtering capabilities for my networking? Do I need to filter and manipulate packets at the kernel level? 
If the answer is yes to any of these questions, you should definitely give it a try. However, eBPF should not be used when other simpler solutions will suffice. It requires a good understanding of the kernel and its internals, so it may not be the best choice for small or simple tasks. That was another episode of 5 Minutes Cloud Native. Join our weekly Cloud Native newsletter by using the links in the description. See you tomorrow.